no secret that Beatrix sanitation helps stop the spread of disease and improve health. But <laughs> global estimates indicate that 2.5 billion people have no access to a clean toilet. That's one in three people. Well, some 660 million do not have access to improved water sources, and nearly a billion people relieve themselves of those known as open defecation. Right, but while the facts have raised a stink among activists, the sanitation crisis is much more than just numbers. To shed more light about this issue ahead of World Toilet Day, we have in the studio Jack Finn, founder of the World Toilet Organization, and Marcus Lin, co-founder and managing director of EcoSoft, a company that specializes in water treatment. Welcome to our program. Thank you. Jack, those are big numbers right there. Why us? Still billions of people without access to a proper toilet, even now. Yeah, I think it came from not talking about it for too long. So, in a way, they are constipated in their mind. They cannot say words that are embarrassing. So, uh, we created the United Nations World Toilet Day, which is our founding day of the World Toilet Organization, 19th of November, coming soon. And uh, we created uh, a big bus and all the media wrote and talked about it and now toilets and sanitation is starting to get hot. Uh, in the past they call it water, now they say sanitation and toilets. Okay, so uh, is this only um, for the developing countries or the third world or are we talking about uh, a universal crisis here? I think the problems in cities is that we have dirty toilets like hawker center, coffee shops still very dirty here. And uh, in many other countries, there's no toilet. And in China, for example, there's a big tourism toilet revolution that is going up to run uh, tourism income by having the toilet clean. Now, Marcus, your company believes decentralization is an effective alternative to managing water, wastewater. Why is that? Yeah. So building a toilet, I mean, it's not just about the toilet bowl itself. I mean, for modern toilets to work, you need to have water and you need to have a way to treat the sewage after it's used to flush the toilets. So um, in most places where people do not have toilets, they are in what we call off-grid areas. So there's no municipal pipe water system, there's no sewer network. Right? So in order for this to work, we need to have a system for people to be able to pump water, treat water, flush the toilets, and treat the wastewater, with or without the municipal systems. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now this obviously involves a lot of money as well. Where is the funding coming from? So uh, we have both our projects, uh, we require a few things. For every community that we work with, we require the villagers to contribute a little bit. Okay? We start off with uh, 1,000 rupees in India, so about 20 Singapore dollars. Uh, importantly, they have to contribute the labor to build the infrastructure for themselves and for their families. And we crop in resources, working with people like Jack, working with corporates, working with foundations, to help them you know, gather with the resources to build the systems. And one of Ecosoft's success story is uh, in the Silhouette Tech village in India. Can you tell us more about that? So Silhouette Tech is uh, a bottom of the pyramid village in uh, central India, in a state called Madhya Pradesh. So when we started about three years ago, they had nothing, nothing literally nothing. So no water, no toilets, the women have to walk four hours a day just to fetch a little bit of water to, to go back home for their daily usage. So the first thing that we did was to mobilize the community. So we went door to door asking every household to contribute uh, 1,000 rupees, asking them to commit the labor and the resources to build the infrastructure. And importantly, we asked them to elect a village council, two men, two women, so there's full gender equality, and to manage and oversee the implementation of the project. You just briefly mentioned women there uh, walking miles to get water, but, but Jack, tell us how, uh, how does it affect women and girls when it comes to sanitation? I think not having toilet is one of the worst things a woman can have. For example, girls going to school when they're having their period, they have no toilet, no privacy to change sanitary napkins, so they will drop out from school, and uh, when they are not educated, they continue the poverty spiral downward. Uh, women going to toilet get peeping toms, get raped, and sometimes get killed because of this rape situation. So there's like too many problems uh, not having toilets. And it's just so obvious that we should talk about it and like we're talking now. It's, it's, it's remarkable to me, you know, we're in the 21st century and some people find it a bit taboo to talk about uh, going to the toilet or having toilets. Mm. Why is that? 
uh, people feel that they are so wholesome, good looking, and they should uh, never admit that they are able to produce a pungent smell, and they feel very guilty that they do so. So but actually, what we're trying to do to break the taboo is to create very, very humorous program. For example, the urgent run. Mm -hmm. This is going to happen in the um, East Coast on the 5th of November uh, in the morning and also in 33 cities around the world. Last year, they run the urgent run. So everybody gather their groups to do an urgent run and talk about supporting World Toilet Day 19th of November. Other than the urgent run, what can public do to improve the situation? I think they could vocalize what they think is the problem and also what they think is the solution and also take action to join volunteer groups like ours and, and EcoSoft and they could also go to um, think about what technology, so depending on who, if you are a university, you have lots of interns, you have got lots of technology, use it, don't just teach it. And uh, if you're a philanthropist, of course, uh, donations are very helpful. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, let's talk about that as well. Do a lot of people come on board to offer uh, sponsorship and donations for projects like this, which will benefit so many people in so many places around the world, especially in places like India and China? Well, you see, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But uh, we're very heartened that there are indeed now some corporates and some individuals who have now stepped forward. Last year, we conducted a unique off-site retreat with a purpose, so supported by Barclays Bank and ISS Group. So instead of spending the annual retreat in a five-star resort, they went to India to build toilets with us. So train two executives and half of them ladies, you know, spend five days uh, building toilets, you know, building water supply, and when the kids came back to school, you know, they went into a brand new school. You know, so it's very heartwarming, you know, for the kids, for the teachers, for the parents, and for the participants themselves. It's also a form of empowerment, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's, it's fantastic when you know you don't have to worry about certain things uh, and feel embarrassed about it. We're actually also building a school toilet in rural China. This program is called the Rainbow Toilet Program. And, and this Rainbow Chai Hong uh, is now catching uh, uh, traction in China. So what we are trying to do, Marcus and myself, is to make sure that not just what we are doing, but to trigger other people to also join in uh, in the program. And that's fantastic. Now, the urgent run, once again, it happens in Singapore, the East Coast, on? Uh, on the 5th of November, uh, 8 a.m., and you have to log on to www.urgentrun.com <laughs> and sign up, and then I look forward to meet everybody uh, over there. Very good. Right. Jack Marcus, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you for having us. Good. Right, so we've been speaking with Jack Sim, who founded the World Toilet Organization, and Marcus Lim, a co-founder and managing director of EcoSoft. And if you're interested in taking part in the Urgent Run, like uh, what Jack was talking about here in Singapore, dust off your trainers for the 5th of November. Also in Paris, France, it's on the 19th of November. For more details, log on to the website on your screen right now. Now. And that brings us to the end of the program, Monday, 31st of October. We're back here tomorrow with lots more, more great stuff. Yeah, what does your...